If you clicked on this video, it's probably because you want to get your life organized with Notion. And Notion is an amazing tool, but you've probably quickly also learned that it can be very overwhelming very quickly. I finally come across a set of pages that I use on a daily basis to organize everything from my task management, client work, and even my finances all under one roof. So my goal of this video is to make sure that by the end of it, you feel confident and not overwhelmed to start using Notion from a very like foundational level to organize your entire digital life. And I'm gonna try my very best to keep it simple, and concise, so let's get right into it. So the first area is task management. So I've created this page called This Week, and with This Week, essentially it's broken down by the week, the weekend, and a few other side points to stay on track. So you see here on this page, I have everything from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend. And essentially what I'll do is every Sunday night, I will go in on this week or this page and I will fill out everything I can to the best of my ability of what I know I have going on in any given week. And so as the week goes on, I'm kind of treating this as like a game. It's like, can I check off all the boxes as the week goes on? The reason why the color coordination is also good is because it helps the important things stand out. I'll even sometimes italicize stuff or make it gray if I feel like it needs to be. So moving over to the right side of this page or the second column, I essentially have deadlines. I'll occasionally toggle this just to see if I'm on track or anything that um, I need to be looking at as the week goes on. Like if the week goes by, what are like the three, two or three things that must get done? And that's where I put my weekly focuses. And these could be anything from work projects to personal projects. Anything that I deem as a weekly focus will go into this category. Then I have this weird one called side quests, which is essentially like bonus. You could also call this like the bonus task. And this is the trap with task management is that if you're not careful, you'll start putting a lot of tasks that are mundane or things that make you feel good because you're box checking, but you're not actually getting the important things done. And then last but not least, I have a home tab. These are tasks that usually need to get done on my personal time. It's not something that I should be doing. For example, like cleaning out my clothes or cleaning out my closet posting items on eBay to sell. Like this is not stuff that I should be doing first thing on a Monday morning when I should be diving deep into my work. The next thing to get organized in your life is going to be your projects. Every one of us have projects we're working on, whether that's for a day job we have or whether we're freelancing or whether we run our own business, whatever you're doing, you likely have projects that you're currently working on. So I created a page that's helped me to stay on track called projects. And essentially it's a pipeline for everything that I have going on that's important. So what's great about um, this type of uh, pipeline or these types of pages is that you can add any type of property, which is really nice because of course, because I'm in production, the properties are gonna be a certain uh, format, but for you and your job, the properties might be very different. And so what's great about it is you can use um, all these different types of properties and then add it as a template so that every time you make a new project, let's say I have a new project here, all the properties will show up empty and then you can just continue to fill it out for every new project. And so once I have a project already filled out, it's in the discovery contract phase for me, you know, it's essentially just a pipeline. So it's like once I'm in the pre-production, production, I'm editing the content, I'm in revising phase, or I've already sent the invoice and the invoice is pending. So you'll notice for my YouTube videos, when I hit new, I have this template created called YouTube video. And in my YouTube video template, it looks much different. So this is an example of a video that I did on how to get rid of brain fog. And as you can see here, this is kind of what it looks like when I'm working on it. So I have this whole checklist here that we can go down as the video is getting complete. I have my whole script right here. And then I have my shot list that I need to go down and get all the clips for, for the video. If you want to change the name of a certain stage of a project, so for example, instead of calling pre-production, what if we called it just like planning or something like that, or we call it like brainstorming, right? There's so many ways to customize it. And what's great about it is that you can also add more. So if I wanna add published, you can add a new one, right? So there's just so many different ways you can build out your own custom pipeline without having to be fixed into one set of parameters. So really take some time to think about what, what are my project buckets? And then within that project bucket, what are the stages of the project from start to finish? And also if it's kind of repetitive, like each project is very similar, then think about how you can create templates so that you can save time each time you start a new project. Next, let's talk about money. 
money, no matter who you are, whether you have a lot of money or you don't have that much money, whatever the case may be, everyone needs to budget. Everyone needs to have a good visual of where all their money is. So I've really split up my finances into four different categories and then a debit credit section. So I'll go over each. So every month there's one day that I will basically go in and have like an accounting day. So on that day, I would look at my bank statements and my transactions. I'll look at all the money that was debited or the revenue that was coming in. And the reason why I do this and I log in this custom table that I've created is so that I can create different filters for myself if I want to get an idea of, you know, how much I made from a specific client or how much I made from a specific place, all these different parameters and properties. And you can obviously create your own custom ones, but I just personally thought this was great because in the past I would look at my bank statements or I would use something like QuickBooks, which is nice because it does categorize it, but you have to keep in mind those platforms like QuickBooks and all these other softwares, they're specifically made for accounting and there's not really much flexibility in creating custom like properties or parameters, right? Because it's already made to be used a certain way. You can't really create your own workflow around it. Whereas with this, I've created this own table just myself and I can have a visual forecast. I have control of what I want to see and what I would not want to see. I also do that for expenses. So I'll have like when I buy gear, so I'll know, you know, which card did I use to pay it with. I'll attach the invoice or receipt because those always get lost. I also have another chart created for contractors. And these are all people that I work with or have worked with and how much I paid them and for which project. So this is just really great because then it gives me a good forecast of who I'm working with the most, how I'm paying out contractors like the most common way. This is something that I've created with my monthly costs. And so essentially I have my personal expenses monthly. So I have like what it cost, the name of the item and the dates like kind of extracted from my account. And then I also have one for my business, right? So I have my business expenses, you know, before I did this and I know maybe some of you can relate, but you don't even know sometimes where the money is coming out of. Like you look at a charge on your credit card statement or on your business or your personal life and you say, where is that even going? What is What did I subscribe to? And then before you know it, you're subscribed to like a bunch of stuff and you don't even know where your money is going. Again, here I have two toggles that I created, which is debit and credit. And this is not really financial advice. This, this video is not financial advice, but essentially I've created these two tabs because I wanna have a very healthy forecast of, you know, how much money do I actually have, you know, debit, and how much money do I owe? You know, what's credit? What what money? What loans do I have basically out? You know, for debit, I have like my investments and joints, my debit, you know, things that are in my business checkings account, personal checkings account, PayPal, other places where money is. That's money that I actually have that I could pull out and use. And then I have credit. So I have essentially, you know, my three credit cards that I use and then loans that I have out. So you know, I have my business credit card, personal credit cards, and each month, basically, that's why I have this like last adjusted date here, because I will essentially, you know, go through these pages and the debit and credit once a month, just so I can keep make sure that it's up to date. And it's just a good mental check, because if I'm making a lot of money, it doesn't really matter if I owe a, like, owe a ton, there's a ton out on credit. So again, another visualization to make sure that you stay organized with your finances. Next, talk about the journal. This journal page is essentially a brain dump for anything that you need to keep track of or tag like team meetings, um, client notes, articles, anything that essentially needs a home for like a note goes into this journal tab or this page for me. And so this is a big part of digital organization, in my opinion, just because everything you come across, any thought that you have, if you want to get it down on paper, or there's a link that you want to save, it needs to go somewhere. And so I just pretty much have like a master spot where I put all my, my journal entries. And then I've created just some very simple tags here um, on what, what that tag is. So then I can filter through it later, especially because with the notion, all the search tools are built in. So you can find a specific page if you title it and you remember like one keyword from your note. Nothing really crazy honestly to talk about with notes besides the fact that when I have a new note, I essentially will just tag it, whether it's like education, an article, a team meeting, I'll title it and then I'll put the date that I wrote it. And then I usually just use these for brain dumps. Scratch paper, I guess you could call it. And it's been really helpful just to have a central place to put all my thoughts down. 
Switching gears a little bit into why I also think Notion is one of the best tools that you can use. They just recently started rolling out a lot of AI tools and features that you could use alongside all the stuff that I've just already been sharing in this video. So I wanna show you some of my favorite AI features that I've been using alongside all my existing kind of ways to use Notion and just how I've supercharged my workflow and just being able to do things a lot more efficiently. Uh, this is a client meeting that I had for a project that was kind of in an inquiry phase. We hopped on a Zoom call. And when I'm on these Zoom calls, I'm just kind of making these random notes, I guess you could say, just things that come to mind, um, things that they need. But after the call, what I end up with is just kind of like this really like kind of scattered bullet list of things. And so what I can ask AI to do, uh, ask AI to summarize what's in this document. As you can see here, it's gave me like a little summary of essentially what this Notion page consists of. I can ask AI to pull action items from this document and it basically just created a to-do list for me from all the notes that I just had from the call. You can use Notion Web Clipper in like Google Chrome. But what's really great about Notion Web Clipper is let's say I have this page here that I pulled notes from, but I have this web article that I came across. You can have a Chrome plugin to essentially save it into a specific database or um, page within your Notion. This is this whole article that was written by Calvin Rosser that I found online. So if I ask Notion to summarize it, AI is essentially summarizing, Notion AI is essentially just summarized in this paragraph what this entire article is about. And so again, this is what's really cool is I can ask AI to create action items, find action items from this article or the book, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. And that gives me just like these very simple checklists that I can use to kind of get a head start on what I can get out of reading this book. Notion has also recently just launched Q&A, which is super awesome because you can pretty much ask AI to pull information from your database, right? So in a chat format, I can ask, what are my tasks for this week? And so all the tasks that I put in this week, it's essentially put it down for me in this format so that I can have a quick glance at it. Another cool AI feature that I haven't been using as much, but I thought it was really cool. I wanna ask AI to translate this into Korean, cause I'm Korean. And they have a few other languages as well. You can also use Notion AI to help with your writing. Let's say I wanna take this paragraph and ask AI to fix spelling and grammar. AI will now check for spelling and grammar mistakes that I've made in my scripting process. Then let's also ask AI to change the tone. How do I make this more confident? And it will literally give me a way to word it so that I sound more confident in my video is let's just make it shorter. Let's say it just sounds too wordy. How do we make this more concise and just a shorter um, way to say the same thing? Now they just made it shorter. So I would imagine if you're a copywriter or if you're just making new content all the time online and you need like a second check, you can use Notion AI to help you out with that. I intentionally kept these pages extremely simple because I know how powerful of a tool Notion can be. And you can really build it out extensively, but that can be really overwhelming for many people who are first starting out. So if you wanna duplicate these very simple pages that I've created for this video, I'll leave it in the description because these are the pages that I use on a daily, weekly, and yearly basis to stay organized. If you also haven't signed up yet, haven't downloaded Notion, and you really wanna kinda of give it a go, I'll leave a sign up link as well in the description, but thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll get back to them as soon as possible. But yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.